The Bay of Gel lies on the southwest coast of Sri Lanka, sheltered by a rocky peninsula. Mentioned as early as 545, it is the most ancient port of call of the Levant. Gel was clearly chosen as a port for excellent strategic reasons. It has a fine natural harbour protected to the west by a south-pointing promontory. The next piece of land, literally, is the frozen waste of the Antarctic, over 5,000 miles distant. The sheer variety of topography, ecology and cultural diversity that is found in Sri Lanka sets the island apart from many other destinations in the world. Indeed, the country can boost of every conceivable landscape other than snow-caped habitants. From golden beaches caressed by the Indian Ocean, the island multitudinous layers slope upwards for ford plains, paddy fields and dense forests. At the end of the 16th century, Portuguese hastily constructed a rampart and three bastions to defend the peninsula on the northern land side. The seaward side was considered invulnerable and was not fortified. The Portuguese had two main objectives when they arrived in the east. The first was to break into trade, which at the time was a monopoly of the Arabs. The second was to convert the eastern people to Christianity. To these ends, they established fortified settlements at strategic points along the sea routes. When the fortified town fell into the hands of the Dutch in 1640, they decided to replace the precarious Portuguese defences, constituted partially of palisades and earth banks. It is this fortified city, built by the Dutch, which exists today with but few changes. It has an area of 52 hectares inside the walls, defended by 14 bastions. The majority of the current walls were built in 1663. Much of the city dates from this period. During the 18th century, protected by a sea wall, finished in 1729, the city reached full development. It housed 500 families, a large number of public administrations, trade establishments and warehouses were located here. However, Gal remained essentially a stronghold. In the layout of the city, the commandant's residences, the arsenal and the powder house were prominent features. The forge, carpentry and rope-making workshops, the naval guardhouse and barracks rounded out a system that closely linked prosperous trade to military security. The Dutch fortifications consisted of rampart walls encircling the settlements which were divided into two areas, one for the Europeans and the other one for the indigenous population. The bastions of fortified towns were named after Dutch cities. The Fort of Gels was handed over to the English only in 1796, one week after the surrender of Colombo. As a British protectorate, Gal remained the administrative centre of the south of Zealand. A number of modifications were then made. Ditched filled in, new blockhouses added, a gate put in between the Moon Bastion and the Sun Bastion, a loud house installed on the Utrecht Bastion and a tower erected for the Jubilee of the Queen Victoria in 1883. Sri Lanka is a small miracle partly due to the compact physical diversity of this pearl-shaped island, but this diversity extends to virtually every aspect of life. 
fringed by variously shaped sublime beaches, from straight expanse to rocky cove, the island possesses a coastal plain containing a host of geographic features. Gal provides an outstanding example of an urban ensemble which illustrates the interaction of European architecture and South Asian traditions from the 16th to the 19th centuries. Among the characteristics which make this an urban group of exceptional value is the original sewer system from the 17th century, flushed with seawater controlled by a pumping station formerly activated by a windmill on the Triton Bastion. However, the most salient fact is the use of European models adapted by local manpower to the geological, climatic, historic and cultural conditions of Sri Lanka. By the 15th century, Arab traders had controlled much of the trade on the Indian Ocean, including that of Sri Lanka. Many of these traders settled down in Sri Lanka, encouraging the spread of Islam. However, when the Portuguese arrived at Sri Lanka during the 16th century, many of their Muslim descendants were persecuted, thus forcing them to migrate to the Central Highlands and to the East Coast. Today, about 8% of Sri Lankans adhere to Islam, mostly from an Arab descendant Moor and Malay ethnic communities on the island. Design was influenced by the tropical climate, helping to produce local hybridized styles, as did the use of oriental motives. Expansive civic and religious design undertakings were implemented, including churches. The foundation of All Saints Church was laid by Calvary Clayton, second bishop of Colombo. The church was consecrated in 1871. The style of architecture is a 13th-century Gothic building modified to suit the climate. It's worth recalling that the site on which the church was built was the old Dutch courthouse Gerritsplatz and also the belief that hanging took place where the altar now stands. Buddhism in Sri Lanka is primarily of the Theravada school and constitutes the religious faith of about 70% of the population. According to traditional Sri Lankan chronicles, Buddhism was introduced into Sri Lanka in the 2nd century BCE by Venerable Mahinda, the son of the Emperor Ashoka. During the Dutch period in Sri Lanka, two types of churches were erected the rural churches, which combined school and meeting house, and the more formal urban churches, which reflected European styles. Built by a Dutch army officer at the site of a previous Portuguese church and completed in 1754, the Dutch Reformed Church is situated close to the new entrance to the fort. The church contains records of marriages since 1748 and baptisms since 1678. The other significant of the building is that there are no pillars inside the building and the weight of the roof is supported by the walls. The real charm of Old Gel lies in the quiet back streets and alleyways of the historic fort which have changed little, if at all, since colonial times.
the city of Gel, which is 119 kilometers away from Sri Lanka's commercial center Colombo, is home to about 100,000 people. What makes Gal special is that despite attempts at modernistic facelifts, it is the only place in Sri Lanka that still retains a unique old-world atmosphere. The sounds of Gal are the call to prayer from mosques, Pali chants from Buddhist temples, fish sellers and tinkers hawking their walls on Main Street. Its fine old colonial mansions, narrow streets and antique cars roaming the town make the Gal Fort a hauntingly beautiful escape into the past. World heritage sites in Sri Lanka bear testimony of the rich and proud heritage that Sri Lanka offers. Sri Lankan customs and traditions have been carried on with the strong line of kings that ruled the country since days long gone. Whether it is natural wonders or religious sites, the country has been recognized for its fine achievements. From impressive and ancient cities to religious monuments and natural formations, the country has it all. Many of the streets, lined with formerly opulent buildings, have characteristic large rooms, arch verandas and windows protected by heavy wooden lowered shutters. Gal also houses Dutch-styled owned mansions with intricate lattice work that is unique to Dutch architecture. Gal is a perfect example of the fusion of European and Asian styles. Its natural beauty, superb archaeological location and rich heritage have made it an outstanding coastal city of Sri Lanka. <laughs>